Huh, okay. Gotcha was a track I've made back in 2016 under the name Corporate. It was uh, released under Play Me Records. The 16th song I made, 11th export. I started using the archive code just in case I didn't come up with a name for the song, but mostly just because it looked cool. The biggest personal success I had with this track was realizing that I was accidentally ripping off Missy Elliott's uh, Work It. Halfway through the production of the song, I was like, oh crap, I made her song. Um, and then I just kept going. And the reality is I'm terrible at copying other people's work and that's how I develop a style. Plus, I kind of wanted to have a different interpretation of that sort of boom, 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 boom. Uh, if I were to hear this song, the thing I would question first would be this uh, siren sort of sound, because uh, I spent a bunch of time on it. That's all grouped into this little group, and it's a sample from a firework during like 4th of July, um, with a couple other samples that's been forced through self-vocoding. Uh, in fact, I recently went to an Imanu DJ set in Amsterdam, and <laughs> afterwards, uh, all of all of us were talking about self vocoding, and a bunch of the producers in that area were using it. So <laughs> I remember that I did that a ton in the in the corporate days. There you go. So I kind of knew what I wanted beforehand. This didn't come out of an accident. I wanted this kind of thing, but I wanted it to be on key, like the last part needed to be on key. So it's actually kind of just a deliberate making the sample, like bending it over to do what I want it to do. Um, this is, if I were to remove the, uh, the vocoding, in fact, I'll just remove all the effects here. So you know, there's a sort of grumble, groan sound in the background, and then, and it's just, it's just pitched down. And then this other one matches the key and the reason it's a separate sample is I think I mixed it down I like pre uh, stuck a vocoder over it um, but really you're just the 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 thing that's aiding this entire thing is making it sound gooey by throwing a, an Ableton vocoder on there and then switching it to modulator and then I messed a little bit with the um, uh, with the graph here so I ended up and at the same time, the, the main bass, which is not much more than a sine wave created in uh, Operator. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you'll notice I use Operator a lot. It's just kind of the bare minimum, exactly what you need to create basic waves um, and mix them. Um, there are a few groups here, but essentially it's a, it's a sine wave with a bit of extra stuff for attack um, so that it has that sort of punchiness. So that's happening, happening um, right, uh, right during the the rest of that sample. That's the rest of it. Doom, 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 doom. You know, it's just this kind of high. So, as a result, you get this. And the the little pewt, pewt, That's you know, same samples as earlier. I just kind of uh, stretched them and pitched them down a little bit. Um, the effect of this track was oddly enhanced by adding a um, <laughs> crickets <laughs> during the kick. So there are all these little kind of high-pitched things that were uh, just fun to throw in there. What about the main bass synth? Uh, that's, that bow is kind of a, a Y2K effect that's created by uh, doing a, a filter on something, a low-pass filter, which you can see at the bottom here, and then combining that with a uh, with some sort of erosion filter. Where did I put that? Let me just give you an example. If you put a really strong erosion filter or bit crushing, they're both very similar, uh, and, and move it down, you'll get this sort of I, I, I did... There's just a tiny bit of that, but that's because it has an erosion filter that's that's really high, so it's just got that little ring. I'll touch on the drums for just a second because they're not that important. They're um, they're just mixed down. You can watch my drum tutorial. That's uh, very similar. The only thing that's added to create a little bit of texture is this awfully stretched out percussion sample. You can hear it repeating and everything, and I, I just boosted the treble end so that it would give all these little kind of crunchy artifacts. 
shameless plug for an upcoming pack. Uh, if you subscribe to my mailing list, which I will stick in the description of this, uh, pretty soon I'm going to be releasing a pack of every single drum that I've ever created under the corporate and pedestrian tactics name. So to include this, uh, the drums from this track um, and other tracks, what I do is I remove the mastering effects uh, from the track and then export the drums individually. So you get something that will be very easy for you to mix. I was pretty proud of this little sequenced sample, and honestly, I don't know where the original MIDI track for it was, and I actually kind of appreciate that. Um, sometimes I'll do a quick sequence thing, and then I'll want to do something like pitch it up, which actually happens later here. Let's see, where is it? Right here. So sometimes I'll have that in MIDI, and then I'll take the entire thing and uh, resample it down to another track so that I can just do the pitching um, region. But more recently, I've just given up and freezed the entire track. Maybe I keep a backup. Clearly, I just destroyed it. I mean, this is quite a few years old. So now it just exists like this. In fact, I should probably just stick this in a sample pack because um, I, I appreciate using raw audio samples like this because as electronic producers, it's very easy for us to make stuff sound clean, and it's actually more fun if uh, stuff has already been mixed down and it's and it's dirty. So I, I, I love working with audio at this point. Um, it's much quicker. Um, you get a bit more art, uh, audio, you get a bunch more artifacts, like, um, like when you're working with uh, acoustic instruments. If you mix something down, you're just going to have to work with it the way that it is. If it sounds wrong, you correct it and make it right and mix it down again. Uh, but by freezing your work, not it not only saves you CPU, but it also gives you the confidence to just keep moving forward and working with what you have, rather than introducing the potential of going back and changing things and potentially self-doubting yourself. <laughs> That's sort of the mental component to it. There's one more synth I want to touch on just at the very beginning because uh, it was super fun. At the time, I was trying to mimic these synth uh, synthesizers that were coming out of like the Battlefield 3 trailer music. And uh, where is it? There's a reverb here. And you can see I've... I've what I've done is I've created a chain, and on one end of the chain, it's it's got a reverb with a full, it's full wet. And then the second part of the chain is empty, so it's basically functioning as, as the dry. What that allows me to do is control the, the wet portion of the reverb individually. So what I did was I stuck a gate on it, and gated it, did a side chain gate to the same synth at the beginning of the chain. So you click this and go to... Battlefield 2 synth, and I say pre-effects. And then I basically turn the attack hold and the release is up just a little bit. The reason for it is that it gates the reverb so that the reverb only fires or shows when the synth is playing and then disappears otherwise. So there's no tail to the reverb. So all it's really doing is modifying the waveform just a little bit, softening it up. If I were to do this track now, what I'd actually do is just do that treatment and then mix it down so that I have that as just a sample that I can work with. Uh, but obviously I've kept it live here. The rest of this is just subtle echo and reverb effects, but it helped create some texture in that synth. There's another one below here. Same thing, right? Yeah, except I've got sort of a plate styled reverb. Uh, on that one. So that's Gotcha. That's it's not every single part of the track, but these are kind of what I what I figured were the hard parts of the track. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you have more questions for me or would uh, like some help on something that you're working on, I'm actually doing private sessions uh, through the Producer Dojo, so you can book some time on there. So I'll leave that uh, in the description as well. Thanks for watching.